Okay, so Ryan is presenting his project on Squamish Nation artist Swalactin Wick, Rick Harry, uh, interviewed by Keelan. And so Ryan is nine years old and in grade four. He is a member of the Squamish Nation of the Coast Salish people, and he lives in North Delta and loves playing hockey. So I'm going to add him here. Um, Keelan. Oh, Keelan, you can unmute yourself and pin yourself, I think, because you're co host there. And I'm going to go away. Go ahead, Ryan, you can start now. Okay, so you're unmuted okay. now. So you can just say hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Ryan and Daniel Ryan Jessa. And, uh, and this is my presentation. Introduction. My Heritage Group project is on the local Coast Salish artist Rick Harry Squalhockton. I have chosen to present this Coast Salish artist Rick Harry because Indigenous art and Indigenous voices deserve to be heard, celebrated, and known to all who live here. It is important for people to know about Rick Harry and Coast Salish art because it was almost all along in, in the attempt to erase Indigenous identities and in Canadian history with the programs like the residential schools. When and where was Rick Carey born? Where was he now? Rick Carey was born at, Squ at Squamish General Hospital in Squamish, BC in 1958. He is a Squamish Nation member who are Coast people. He, his parents are Ernie and Gwen Harry. They are my great grandparents. I'm proud to tell the, tell, tell that the Rick Carey is my uncle. Rick Carey lives in the West Vancouver with his family. How long has Rick Harry been making art? Rick Harry has always been artistic and has been making art since he was five years old. He started carving when he was 12 years old and taught himself how. What type of art does Rick Carey make? Rick Carey makes coast shirt that is all around the lower mainland of Vancouver. During our interview, we visited his workshop and saw how he was making his newest totem pole. He showed me the small models of each section of the totem pole, such as a Thunderbird, and how he uses the small model to, to scale the larger works he creates. What medium does Rick Carey use? He uses wood, stone, metal, jewelry, paper, paint, and glass for his creations. Where did Rick Carey learn to make art? Rick Carey learned to make his art in Squamish. He mainly self-taught and was encouraged to keep pursuing his artistic dreams from others who admired his artwork. He has attended Capolino College and Emily Carr College of Art, which helped him start his career. What is Rick Carey's favorite piece of favorite art piece he has created and why? As an artist, Rick Carey doesn't have a favorite piece of art. He says it's because it leaves me it leaves him creative to keep making more. He also says art is mostly trial and error. He is inspired by those who uplift him and to share his culture with others. Why does Rick Carey make his art? Rick Carey loves being creative th and thrives on people's reactions to seeing his completed works. He relates to traditional stories and and to his own life and uses his artwork to raise awareness and in the
Cultural Center, Vancouver General Hospital, 2010 Olympic Designs, West Vancouver Community Center, Whistler Peak to Peak Building, University of Victoria, Capilano University, Emily Carr College of Art, UBC Museum of Anthropology, Vancouver International Airport, and all over the lower mainland of Vancouver. What does having an order of British Columbia mean? An order of British Columbia is a civilian order of merit. Rick Carey received an order of British Columbia in 2012 for his contributions of arts to lots of communities around the world, uh, around the British Columbia, not the world. The projects he has earned this prestigious recognition for help create opportunities for reconciliation and make ghosts are earth accessible to all. What can Indigenous youth learn from Rick Harry? Rick Harry shares his traditional knowledge stories through his art and seeing youth who inspired him to give gives him inspiration to work the best you can, keep your focus and do better tomorrow. Rick Harry. Inclusion. The most interesting thing I found about this, about Rick Harry is that he doesn't have a favorite art piece and he's always inspired to create. My favorite part of this project was presenting an influential indigenous artist and that he's my uncle. The most challenging part of this project was learning how to research and setting up an interview at his workshop, bibliography. Thank you. And then, awesome, thanks so much, Ryan. That was a really great presentation. I think the thing I, I love the most about your presentation is that you have such a good personal connection to it because mm -hmm. he's your uncle. And yeah. I would encourage everybody to go and check out the blog because all the pictures from your project are on there. And it's it's really cool that you put so many pictures of your uncle's work in there. Yeah. Um, have Has your uncle taught you any ways to do art like he has? No, not yet. Not yet. But I'm, I'm sure. No. I... Are, are, you, are you hoping you can learn one day? Yeah, I'm hoping to. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I know your uncle said he didn't have a favorite piece of art of his. Do you have a favorite one, though, of all of his different work? Yes, I do. My favorite art piece would probably be the glass art on the, on the bottom left corner of this one, of this slide. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, Rachel's, Rachel's just put your project in the chat too, so all the audience can go and take a look. I know I really like the glasswork too. That was one of my favorites as we were looking through it. So I think you've, you've really told us why it's important to spread awareness about this topic and using Indigenous art as a way of storytelling. Um, how do you think you're going to be able to share that awareness moving forward? Um... Probably to be like it creating like some kind of like a something to like creating indigenous art and to move it somewhere like from like British Columbia or Vancouver, like Alberta and then like to Yukon and to other like areas around the world in Canada. Yeah, that sounds, yeah, that sounds really cool. I think that um, as important as it is to kind of create this space in British Columbia to share art like this, it'd be amazing if we can even expand that um, further in Canada or even a little international, like you said. Yeah. Um, so I know, I'm assuming you used your uncle as one of your main yeah. sources for your research. Uh, can you tell me about any other sources that you used? Um, 
The other sources I I use were uh, I avoid uh, websites like very West Vancouver artmuseum.ca and and all the websites on my bibliography. Bibliography. Mm, I think yeah. it's you were you were lucky in that you had a really a really valuable primary source in your uncle and could supplement that with with lots yeah. of other cool sources as well. Um, so when you were doing your research and when you were talking to your uncle, do you think that researching this topic changed your perspective on any issues right now? And if no. you did feel that way, how do you think they changed your perspective? No, they were all the same? No, yeah, they were all the same. <laughs> yeah, and do you want to kind of expand a little bit on what your perspective of those issues was or how you feel felt about them and feel about them now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Um, no. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> totally yeah. fine. Um, so, like you, we were kind of talking about, you chose to include lots of images um, in your presentation. Why did you choose to include those images? And what, what kind of strengths do you think that brought to your presentation? Uh, I think like the images were very important because it would show other people what my my uncle Rick Carey has done and, and like yeah we stand stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree that I think the best way to showcase him was to show his his work. And you can really see that that his talent comes across through his work. So I just have one more question for you. Is there anything else you'd like to talk to me about your project that I haven't asked you about or um, any other things about your uncle you want to tell me? Uh, probably that like my second favorite art piece on the would be the fire truck that he did, the back of the fire truck mm -hmm. on the, the middle on my on my conclusion page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll definitely encourage everybody to go check that one out too. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, Ryan, for telling me about your uncle's story today. And I can really tell you put in a lot of work. I'm glad that we had this opportunity to look at some of your uncle's uncle's artwork. And I'm really excited to see what else he does. Okay. Thank you. Okay.